Over the years, modern warfare has nudged the world towards developing cutting-edge weapon systems, especially with the recent creation of directed energy weapons, including lasers, microwaves, and particle beams. In April 2024, Grant Shapps, the United Kingdom's former Secretary of State for Defense, hinted at the possibility of sending Britain's most powerful directed energy weapon prototype, Dragonfire, to Ukraine. Could this tip the balance of the Russo-Ukrainian war in Ukraine's favor? Just how powerful is the United Kingdom's Dragonfire? Join us as we discuss the United Kingdom's powerful laser air defense system and its potential impact on Ukraine. Warfare old and new has been largely responsible for bringing out the best of humans, destructive or protective thinking, with each country at arms actively developing new ways to hurt each other. While wars can be fought and won on land or in open seas, aerial battle has always defined the peak of military might, and the superpowers are now looking to dominate the skies. Over the years, Europe, North America, and some of the countries in the Indo-Pacific regions have often demonstrated new ways to wage war, with developments of land, naval, and aerial marvels like the F-22 Raptors, the F-35 Lightning II, and other unmanned aerial vehicles, otherwise called UCAVs. Recently, the recent domination of warfare by optionally manned drones, stemming from the United States Defense Program, has sent a strong message to the rest of the world, especially superpower countries, who are supposed to be the leaders of the world as they control the world's greatest sources of power, economic, and military. However, the landscape of war has been completely revolutionized over the last two decades, with countries at arms engaging each other in drone strikes and even cyber warfare, creating a high-tech problem while consequently demanding high-tech solutions. While drones and fighter jets have seemingly taken over the weapon system space, a new player is on the board, threatening to unravel the chokehold of the former on the warfare technology space, directed energy weapons. Although the existence and even the sheer thought of its creation have been declared nigh impossible and something out of a Star Wars movie, while reports suggest a possibility of this creation in the near future, well, that future is right now. Since the inception of reports suggesting the possibility of not only creating versions of the directed energy weapons, but also attaching them to aircraft and land vehicles, superpower countries like the United States and the United Kingdom have often declared their interest in making it happen, forging forward in their ambitions and hoping to reach their goals as soon as possible. While the top technologically inclined countries in North America, Europe, and some parts of the Indo-Pacific regions have all given it a shot, with some recording success and others recording intense failures due to either a lack of technical know-how or poor funding. Amongst the hosts of success recorded, one of the directed energy weapon inventions that caught the eye is the United Kingdom's Dragonfire laser system, which is garnering a lot of attention and not just based on its power, size, and flexibility, but mainly because of its hinted debut in Ukraine. In April 2024, Grant Shapps, the United Kingdom's former Secretary of State for Defense, revealed that they might be sending the very first prototype of their newly created air laser defense system to Ukraine. But why Ukraine and why now? For some context, the Russo-Ukrainian war has been quite one-sided in terms of damage. While a case might be made for mutual destruction, Russia's military might rank significantly higher than Ukraine's. The United Kingdom, which has visibly displayed its discontent in Russia's deliberate annexation of Crimea in 2014 and the all-out war in 22, might be finally backing up its discontent by deliberately offering its newly created weapon of mass destruction. Laser air defense systems have been shown to capably offer a bit of scrutiny on the usage of taxpayers' money. For example, the United States Navy in April 2024 put in for an urgent order from manufacturing support industries, defense solutions for the truck-mounted electronic advanced ground launcher systems, or EAGLS, armed with laser-guided advanced precision kill weapon system, two rockets. These rockets are known for their immense ability to counter opposition aircraft, including drones and missiles. While the effect of the truck-mounted electronic advanced ground launcher systems cannot be overstated, they cost a lot of money. Imagine spending $25,000 on each rocket to combat emerging and persistent drone threats. That was the United States reality. 
Over time, Congress began to debate the importance of approving that much money on rockets as an air defense system, which culminated in the search for a weapon just as effective, but costing much less. Ditto, directed energy weapons. On the flip side, reports have shown Russia's deliberate use of Iran-made Shahed drones in their attacks on Ukrainian soil. While their method seems rather impressive, a directed energy weapon, like a laser or particle beam, offers precision-guided destruction in shooting down drones. Hence the United Kingdom's rationale to send in one of their prototypes. But questions linger around the United Kingdom's real intentions. Is this really a helping hand for Ukraine? Or are they just trying hard to catch up to the United States' recent warfare success with the deployment of their high-energy lasers overseas? Whether the United Kingdom's reason revolves around genuine support for a nation under attack like Ukraine, or this is just another flex from a bigger country trying to assert itself as a power broker, one thing is a certainty. The United Kingdom's potential decision for such grand gesture is more than just a gift, but a statement of intent telling the world just how much they are prepared to take over the future. In the grand scheme of things, if it is successfully deployed against Russia's barrage of Iran-made Shahed drones, this could mark an impressive milestone for the United Kingdom, setting them up as one of the very first countries to have a war-tested directed energy weapon. But what makes the Dragonfire laser technology so impressive that it has other nations on their toes? Could it possibly spark a global arms race with the United Kingdom sitting right at its top? The Dragonfire isn't just some other ambitious project coming from the desperation of the United Kingdom's Ministry of Defense. Rather, it represents a well thought out and carefully curated plan to leap into the future of aerial combat without being left behind. However, at the core of this plan is the Dragonfire laser. The future of warfare has slowly shifted in the past from the Neanderthals discovering fire and flames for protection and survival, to the emergence of spears, which then gave way to swords, which were eventually upgraded to gunpowder. But now, centuries later, the world is seeing a new type of fire, lasers. The Dragon Fire was first publicly revealed at the 2017 Defense and Security Equipment International Conference in London. After hashing out a plan for the development of this game-changing weapon, the British government initiated a pact using the Ministry of Defense and their resources and pairing them with one of the United Kingdom's best weapon makers in the private sector. As expected, developing a new cutting edge weapon that possibly takes over the world and warfare as a whole definitely costs a lot of money. The Dragonfire was allocated a contract worth north of a hundred million pounds, 30 of which was awarded by a combination of the Ministry of Defense's Chief Scientific Advisors Research Program from various companies led by MBDA UK with Chinetti Q, Leonardo, GKN, RK, BAE Systems, and Marshall Land Systems participating to develop a demonstrator that can mirror exactly what the final phase of the laser-directed energy weapons would look like. In 2018, the trial eventually started, and this time, the United Kingdom had finally made serious headway. So in 2019, there was a major demonstration that showed just how much headway the Ministry of Defense was making with the production of the game-changing weapon system. In an unfortunate turn of events, the COVID year, 2020, halted some of their plans to push out the production on a massive scale before the next two years. However, in 2022, Dragonfire was ultimately deployed in trial mode in Scotland, and for the first time, the world could actually see it in action. Although not battle-tested, it was the perfect chance to see what it was actually capable of. After the trials in 2022, MBDA United Kingdom Division, a pan-European missile systems company, was completely mesmerized by the capabilities of this weapon. The initial low-power trials proved Dragonfire's ability to track air and sea targets with exceptionally high accuracy. This was the moment that the belief set in that they might be actually onto something here. Soon they invested more money, looking forward to a new trial by November of the same year, and this time, a higher power than the last trial. The November 2022 trial was completely different, especially with the introduction of simulated operatively representative scenarios, showing its capabilities possibly functioning in real battle scenarios. Having seen the success of their latest trial, they plan to roll out into massive production as soon as possible. 
However, the United States Ministry of Defense hoped for a real-life test, an actual battleground where every shot counts. Then came the Russo-Ukrainian War, creating the night-perfect opportunity for a testing ground. While there aren't major reports confirming the rationale behind the United Kingdom's potential gesture to give some of their prototypes to Ukraine, speculations from other countries lean toward a more controversial reason. Fast forward to January 2024 in Scotland, the Ministry of Defense decided to engage the Dragonfire in airborne target exercises in Scotland. While the range remains classified, the Ministry of Defense waxed lyrical about its Hall of Fame performance. However, the precision level on the Dragonfire was reported as equivalent to hitting a one British pound coin, which is about 23 millimeters in size, from a calculated distance of one kilometer. It wasn't just the development of new weapons. It was charging into the future of warfare and leaving everyone else behind. While the Ministry of Defense kept most of the laser's targets classified, an article was released on the 8th of November, 2022, which revealed that the laser was later tested on bigger targets, such as drones and metals, including sea hulls and other possible battlefield weapons. Although a loss of lives is the most associated concept with a war, it also costs money. While the former is nearly impossible to overcome, budgets can definitely be adjusted, especially with the invention of a laser-directed energy weapon like the Dragonfire. Repelling a drone or missile has always been attributed to surface-to-air missiles and other kinetic solutions like machine guns, missiles, and net launchers, while other non-kinetic methods like jamming radio signals have also been considered effective. While these technologies and hardware are all considered effective, they are also considered expensive. Hence, the production of a laser-directed energy weapon like the Dragonfly, solving both battlefield and economic problems. For some context, a laser-directed energy weapon, even fired at its highest power surge, only costs 10 British pounds per shot, an equivalent of running a heater for one hour. Can there be a better bargain in weapons than that? Watching this weapon perform at such a high level, even in trials, and without real battlefield experiences, other countries are at the door, seeking a way into this new level of weaponry. Imagine running a war at the same cost as taking a shower. The appeal was just too strong for other nations to look away from. The United Kingdom Ministry of Defense had projected a 2032 production rollout for Dragonfire since trials ended. However, the new procurement rules had increased the rate of development. Hence, it is expected that the Dragonfire is aboard His Majesty's Royal Navy ship come 2027. While the United States moves quickly into production, countries like Australia have reportedly been in constant communication with one of the private companies involved in building the Dragonfire, Shinetti Q, looking to get them to contribute to building an Australian version of the Dragonfire. Whether the United Kingdom's Ministry of Defense claims autonomy on the information and possibly ignites an arms war or simply just lets it slide is a constant food for thought peddled especially by the media. However, aside from being a cost-effective countermeasure against aerial threats, what features make the Dragonfire a game-changing, laser-directed energy weapon? Although the full technical approach to the designs of Dragonfire remains classified, at least until its full release in 2027, when it is given to His Majesty's Royal Navy, some of its designs are clearly implied. For example, it uses a United Kingdom-pioneered beam-combining technology to deliver a laser beam with increased power density, reduced defeat times, and increased effective range. However, one of the most effective ways for a laser-directed energy weapon to enact total control destruction is through beam combination and delivery. Hence, the Dragonfire uses a fiber laser architecture, meaning that a couple of low-powered beams are generated separately and transmitted through the attached glass optical fibers and then combine in a split second into one single powerful beam. But how exactly does the weapon work? Laser weapons work by converting electrical power into an intense stream of photons that, when narrowed through a beam director, can burn through various materials, including the carbon fiber body of a drone, the casing of a rocket or mortar, or even the hull of a small boat. While one of the greatest issues with creating a laser-directed energy weapon has revolved around maintaining the quality, coherence, and focus of the laser beam over really lengthy distances, the glass fibers help to keep the laser focused, seeking and destroying even the smallest items from a long distance 
without hitting anything else, which is less than what can be said for juggernaut weapons like machine guns or the truck-mounted electronic advanced ground launcher systems, a popular weapon of mass destruction in the United States. However, one question lingers around the thermal needs of a weapon generating that amount of beam using photon particles. Is there a point where it overheats and needs to cool down before use, during the heat of battle, or is there a complete reduction in performance? The Ministry of Defense focused on creating fiber-based lasers other than the conventional solid-state lasers because the former could easily regulate and redistribute the heat all over the glass fibers to avoid a concentration that overheats the machine and consequently slows it down. This ability to manage the cooling while retaining its efficiency remains a huge part of the Dragonfly's success. Furthermore, the laser-directed energy weapon is also retrofitted with a targeting system that helps it lock onto its target. This targeting system includes an electro-optical camera and a second lower power laser for imaging and tracking, which are mounted to a turret. While setting up a target and taking it out with precision has been the most easily decoded asset on the Dragonfire for most laser-directed energy weapons eggheads on social media, one thing remains a bee in their bonnet, an itch they cannot scratch. How does a laser system that fires off tremendous amounts of beam recharge consistently while on the move? While it is easy to imagine a car using energy stored in a battery chemically, a laser beam is a completely different beast. Dragonfire, like every other laser-directed energy weapons, need a huge surge of power to keep firing off its heavy beams without running out of steam, and that's where flywheel energy storage systems come in. In simple terms, the flywheel works by spinning a heavy rotor at extremely high speeds, generating a lot of kinetic energy, which is then stored and converted back to electricity when the need arises. For a machine like Dragonfire, it is nigh impossible for conventional batteries or even generators to store that level of power needed to release short or long bursts of beams when needed. It's like having a high-speed energy spring that can store and deliver power efficiently within a split second. While creating the Dragonfire was no mean feat, there are a lot of speculations on how it will be fitted to all types of weapons, whether land, naval, or air. How do they plan to retrofit existing technologies like fighter jets, Humvees, or even warships with Dragonfire? Although speculations continue, there has been no real knowledge of how this weapon is supposed to fit into existing war technologies. Will warships be remodeled to make some space for it? Will a Humvee be powerful enough to move Dragonfire on its back while in action? Can Dragon shoot a moving target or shoot while moving? The answers to this question would seemingly have to wait until 2027, when the Ministry of Defense decides to fit a Dragonfire on one of His Majesty's warships from the Royal Navy. While it remains a difficult question to answer about Dragonfire, some have speculated that the United Kingdom's Ministry of Defense might take a play from the United States' playbook attaching Dragonfire to a land vehicle manned by a trained user and stationing it on the battlefield, where it can take shots at its target easily, which is the exact same way the United States deployed their 20-kilowatt palletized high-energy laser, or PEL, in popular parlance. Whether the United Kingdom's Ministry of Defense opts for this option or has something even more sophisticated in store remains a concept to look forward to. While 2027 seems a bit around the corner, it might seem a bit too far for Ukraine, who have been rumored to hang on to Grant Shapp's subtle hint at possessing a Dragonfire. Should the war rage on until 2027, when the first Dragonfire is set to be released, none can tell if the former Secretary's hinted promise will be fulfilled. Thanks for watching. While you are still here, click on the link on your screen to check out another of our videos. See you there.